Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Ranked, where I climb the online VGC 2018 ladder and provide live commentary as I go. It's our fourth episode, if you haven't seen the first three, definitely check them out. They've all been a little bit longer than usual, but they've all had some really exciting games, and I'm loving the format already, just diving into things. Uh, we've played against a bunch of really cool teams, like yesterday, it feels like each day there's a theme, right? Like yesterday was kind of the more standardish Kangaskhan teams, the day before we ran into like three weather teams in a row, and then the first episode we ran into James Beck who had a really cool team with Halucha so we're already seeing all kinds of different stuff and hopefully we'll see more exciting stuff you know obviously like we're still kind of early on in the format early on in the ladder and the reason why I'm using this team uh, as I've mentioned before is to really get acclimated with it with the format just to see you know what else is around but there's a ton of ideas I want to try out and I think one of the reasons why as I've mentioned before I really want to you know make Road to Rank super special this year is because there's so many cool teams and strategies to try out and you know it's very resemblant to, or I guess like it doesn't really resemble any format we've played, but the closest is 2015 in the sense that it's the same megas and uh, we just get a new pool of Pokemon from Gen 7. So yeah, I'm really excited for it and we're gonna find Ethan from England with a rating of 1571 to kick off this episode. As always, if you guys enjoy Road Trink, please share your support by leaving a like on the video, I'd really appreciate it. You guys have been super awesome with the support and as you can tell, I'm really trying to do this on a daily basis as consistently as possible and you know, obviously we'll continue to do that as long as people continue to come out and support it. So thank you guys, really appreciate it. Um, you know, just, you guys are awesome, so thanks. Anyway, first game of the day, let's see, Ferrothorn, Swampert, I hate Ferrothorn, I, I, I guess I, sh I really need like a fire type attack on this team. Uh, Coco, Titar, Volcarone, and Salamence. Swampert seems so out of place here, you know, like, it's probably not Megapert then, it's probably like AV. Uh, that's what I would guess. I'm inclined to lead Salamence, Titar, I feel like that covers all my options, I think this might actually maybe be a Bulu game. Kind of feels like that. Um, what do I want as the last one, though? Dang, all of my Pokemon work as my last one, and that's what makes this hard. Maybe I don't bring Bulu. Like, Bulu's... I don't know. Salamence Titar, what's that weak to? Like, Ferrothorn is a concern, so part of me wants Aegislash, because I can Z-move it. Um, maybe I go Excadrill. Aegislash, but then my matchup against Swampert's really bad. I feel like I need one of Rotom or Bulu for the Swampert. Hmm. You know what? I'll show Bulu some love. I haven't brought in much. Salamence, Titar. Uh, Excadrill, maybe? Alright, I'll go Excadrill. I have to really be careful, though, because Ferrothorn can be a major problem for me if I don't play well around it. Um... Yeah, I mean, like, Rotom, bringing Rotom doesn't help much other than getting a burn off against it. Basically, ideally, I want to be in a position where I can 2v1 Ferrothorn, where it's not recovering enough, and I do more damage than it does to me. That's a really sick outfit. I wonder where you get that shirt. So, Salamence, Titar for Intimidate, and Scarf support, in I mean, uh, right off the bat, as we see Swampert Immense from my opponent. Um, that's actually really scary from my opponent's end. Yeah, I'm not too happy to see the Swampert. That's a great lead. I mean, I could just try to dunk Salamence with a Hyper Voice and an Ice Beam, or Ice Punch. I think if you're my opponent, you probably Tailwind and Ice Beam my Salamence. That's what I would, would think. Oh, Swampert coming out. It's making an appearance. It's not looking good. Not looking good. I kind of... I feel like I really need to conserve Salamence here. Ah, uh, my opponent definitely led better than me, and I should have read into it. Yeah, this is where Rotom would have helped out a lot. I think, if I had to guess, it's going to be AV Special Swampert. Uh, I used that at Worlds in 2015. Hmm. I mean, I could switch out into Excadrill and Ice Punch Mence. Okay, let's go for that. Because if I can knock out Mence, Bulu has a much better time in this game. And even with Tailwind, uh, I mean, Salamence, oh, it switches out into Ferrothorn. Okay. I wasn't expecting that. I don't think that's amazing for me, but it's also not awful. I don't really do very much there, unfortunately. And there's an Ice Beam. Yeah, that's what I thought. Hmm. How much does that do? Not too much. My opponent did bring the Ferrothorn, which sucks. Okay, so obviously I have to worry about Scald now. If I'm my opponent, I might Ice Beam the Tyranitar slot, and I don't really have a good switch into that. 
Maybe I just want to double up here into Ferrothorn. I think I actually will. I'm going to Drill Run and Ice Punch it. I'm just going to basically try to get as much damage off all at once as possible. I'm not going to knock it out, but... A, a Scald shouldn't knock out Excadrill here. A Scald... Like, you need to double up to knock out something right now. And I'm willing to trade one of these Pokemon. Oh, wow. Swampert protects. Okay. Does Ferrothorn protect too? Because that'd be perfect. Or sorry, if it doesn't protect. Yeah, awesome. Nice. The protect there is curious. I don't know what you're really worried. I guess maybe a tectonic rage. That would be the one explanation. Um, so I get a lot of damage on a Ferrothorn. That's actually really, 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 really good for me. Like, this, I am taking Iron Barb's damage, obviously. Uh, it does just Gyro Ball. So that probably knocks out Tyranitar. Yes, it does. But now I get a free switch in into... Huh, what do I want to switch into? That's a shame, because I, if I'm my opponent, I definitely don't protect Swampert. I Ice Beam this Tyranitar, but maybe my opponent... Like, you should know I'm Scarf, given how the weather is activated. Um, so, like, I'm frustrated because I could have switched into Salamencer, but I can't afford losing... I couldn't afford just switching into Salamence and losing it. Um, more inclined to go with Bulu. I'm going to go Bulu. And the reason why I'm going to go Bulu is because I have Substitute on it. So I think here you switch out Swampert into Salamence and you protect Excadrill. Although maybe you don't even need to protect Excadrill. Uh, because you get the Intimidate off against me. Ah, I should have switched into Salamence then maybe. Hmm. I mean I could Rock Slide. Or I kind of want to like Iron Head expecting Salamence. And then switch Bulu out into Mence. My own Mence. If I expect Swampert to switch out into Salamence right now. Do I want to substitute? I could just Drill Run. Sub. I don't like this as much. I should have switched out. Yeah, because I don't think I'll knock out. But I'm running out of time, so I'd rather at least make one move. Yeah, Swampert switches out. Mence. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. If Ferrothorn protects, though... See, the thing is, just getting a sub up with Bulu doesn't really mean too much for me right now, anyway. Uh, at least connect with the draw run, which is nice, but it's not going to be enough, right? Yeah, I didn't think so. Mm, that's unfortunate. So I get a sub up, but yeah, the play I wanted to make, I think, was just uh, Iron Head, Salamence, and switch out. Seed Bomb? Whoa, I didn't see that coming. Oh, this is going to be a tight one. Um, I'm down 4-2 right now, but I do have Bulu subbed up with the Z-move still. And now I get to bring in my Mence, which I can Hyper Voice with. And that will knock out Ferrothorn. But I, I lost a lot of momentum in the sense that I lost way too many Pokemon too quickly. Yeah, I mean, Ferrothorn's a tough Pokemon to begin with, and my opponent outled me, so playing around that was really tricky. And the biggest turn was basically not switching in, switching Tyranitar out in events. That would have given me so much momentum. But, no worries. Okay, I'm gonna Mega Evolve, obviously. Do I want a Tailwind? I think I'll just Hyper Voice here. Should I Z-move here? I'm actually considering it. I don't really need to save the Z-move for anything else, so you know what? Let's go for it. Although Salamence resists it so darn well. Not that I expect it to knock it out, but we'll see. Hmm. If my opponent has Draco Meteor too, I'm screwed. Oh, Hyper Voice goes through sub! Oh. I forgot about that. That's gonna knock me out. <sighs> That's a really bad blunder on my end. I completely forgot about that mechanic. I mean, I didn't make the play I wanted to make uh, to begin with, but... Ah, that sucks. I should have protected Bulu then. Unless Men's Tail wins here. It does. Okay, so maybe, maybe I'm still in it then. I don't know. If I weren't intimidated, I'd feel better. Because I think Bloom Doom could knock out. But with the Intimidate, definitely not. Yeah, yeah. This probably only does like 25-30% actually. Let's see. Maybe I should have just Horn Leech for recovery. How much does this do? 
Yeah, I completely forgot about the hyper voice. Yeah, that does nothing. <laughs> I mean, Solomon has four times resistant. I don't know why I expected it to do more. I, I should have just probably Horn Leech just to get some recovery. Okay, so it's not over yet because I still could be faster with my Mence against Swamper. I mean, it depends on what my opponent's last Pokemon is. I, I just, I'm really angry about the me second guessing the turn, or not second guessing, but just like running out of time because I wanted to switch out into my Bulu out into Mence and just Iron Head the Salmon switch in, which would have been a lot better for me instead of Drill running. Um, okay, Swamper does come back in. Hmm. So yeah, it comes down to, yeah, I actually should have saved the Z move so I could one shot Coco, even at minus one. I mean, you Ice Beam Mence and just Hyper Voice here for my opponent, right? I don't think I survive a Hyper Voice. Do I survive a Hyper Voice with Bulu? I have no idea. I don't think Tailwind is the right play. I think I just Hyper Voice here. I think I Hyper Voice, hope that I survive, and then face a 1v1. Like, so it's like, can Bulu survive it? Yeah, it does Hyper Voice. Okay, can I survive this? If I do, maybe I win. Nah, I don't. Okay. I shouldn't have expected it to, but I thought maybe. Oh, Swampers faster anyway. Yeah, then I definitely lose. Um, yeah, that was just like the subplay ends up being a lot worse because of the hyper voice mechanic too. So that that was like, had I remembered the mechanic, that is not a play I should have even considered going for. Um, and that was just kind of a a bad play on my end. Yeah, I think the Iron Head could have worked out a lot better. Swamper definitely put in its work there because of how it threatened Salamence with Ice Beam and how Salamence can't really do too much in return. Um, that in general, Salamence is a really good matchup against me, and, <coughs> or Swampert, excuse me, and I think I just didn't play that very well, the matchup was pretty hard to begin with, but overall, like, I mean, for example, what can I really lead against Salamence and Swampert, right, because the Salamence checks everything, like, Aegislash, maybe, but I still have to worry about Earth Power, uh, from Swampert, so, I don't know, that one was definitely a tricky game, one where it feels like, Matchup wasn't too great in my favor, but there were a bunch of opportunities where I could have made plays where I didn't because um, I was just thinking from what I would have done from my, my perspective. Uh, one of the biggest ones was not switching the Tyranitar out uh, into Salamence. Like, had I switched it out into Salamence, that turn would have been in a really advantageous position. And the other turn being when, um, yeah, when I went for the sub, and that really didn't give me any mileage at all. Had Drill Run knocked out Excadrill, or sorry, the Ferrothorn, which I thought it might have had a chance to, then maybe, but without the knockout, definitely not. So... Next game today, uh, Pelipper, Ferrothorn, Manectric, so probably the Mega on the team. It's the only possible Mega. Mimikyu, Tapu Bulu, and the Baratic. Okay. Um, hmm. What do I want to lead? I feel like Mens still works here. I might actually go Mens Bulu for once. Actually, Aegislash is really good against my opponent's team. Yeah, Mens Aegislash. But Titar in the back for sure. Excadrill seems really solid overall. Uh, okay, let's go with Excadrill. I don't like Rotom too much here, especially if my extra chooses not to Mega Evolve. That's definitely a really cool team that my opponent has, though. It's like, um, you know, tons of Pokemon that aren't very standard. The Bear Take definitely sticks out, but like the Midnectric uh, as well. It's interesting to see Pelipper as Rain without like, you know, the likes of Kingdra, Ludicolo, Mega Swamper, which we saw in, uh, was it Episode 2, I believe. So, yeah, I'm still learning a lot, definitely, and I, I'm learning a lot about matchups as well, which I feel like is definitely really important in this format, and that last game was a game where, definitely winnable, but the Swamper tech definitely helped my opponent a lot, and it was a really cool tech. But, as always, there's, a, like, very rarely can you lose a game and say, like, oh, yeah, I played perfectly, there was nothing better I could have done, like, there were definitely a lot of opportunities uh, that I missed out on. We see Bulu and Manectric from my opponent's end, okay. Hmm. I don't really know what to expect here. Minectric gets overheat, which I'm worried about. Could HP ice as well. I don't know, I kind of want to just... Mega Evolve. I should try to knock out Bulu, but I have Teacher X control in the back. I'm just going to Mega Evolve. I'm going to Tailwind. And... I think I'll just try to knock out Manectric because it can cycle and intimidate, and it is the Mega. Eh, 
Actually, maybe I should prioritize Bulu. If I get a Flash Cannon off against it, then it'll be in Rock Slide KO range. Most likely, if it doesn't just get knocked out outright by Flash Cannon. Yeah, I, mean, I used Life Orb in Age Slash on 2015, so I'm like, more used to those calcs, and obviously facing against newer Pokemon. I don't know how the calcs work out, so it's more like intuitive. But... Getting Tailwind up would be nice. Bulu actually switches out, which is a very nice play on my opponent's end, going to Pelipper. I don't mind that too much, though, because it's like, I break a potential Sash on Pelipper, and I could potentially Rock Slide. Although, it would have been nice just to nuke the Manectric. True Manectric very likely could try to go for a Thunder right now. Might not even be Mega Manectric, but it's just the only possible Mega Evolution on my opponent's team. So, we'll see, because if I get the Tailwind up and Manectric doesn't knock... Oh, wow. Okay. I do get the Tailwind up. Interesting. And it just goes for a thunder. No paralysis, please. <laughs> Why do I even ask? Okay. So, paralysis obviously kind of sucks, but uh, oh well. What can you really do? Um, I should be faster now. I mean, Solomon's outspeeds both of these and since with the paralysis mechanics i'm actually just back to neutral so i think i'm just gonna double edge i don't want to take the risk let manectric is faster than aegislash although i could actually i could probably figure that out based off the speeds but um yeah i i don't want to take up too much time just because that's something i'm getting used to as well yeah i i don't want the risk especially if yeah i just like don't want to take any damage with aegislash this turn might as well um if i get paralyzed obviously like that sucks but then i get the free switch into tyranitar so it's like our tailwinds are both up but i've got scarf tar out so i don't know i feel pretty good about this in terms of well a lot of these games that we've played so far has really felt like it comes down more to matchups um than to one person really outskilling the other that comes and that, that's the case in pokemon a lot of the times honestly and part of that is like the kind of team that you use but i'm just gonna king shield with aegislash to play it safe right now <coughs> and if I knock out Pelipper, that means I get Weather for the remainder of the game, which means Exu Drill is in a phenomenal spot. And I don't get Paralyzed, thankfully, and that should knock out Pelipper. Yes, it does. Excellent. So, kind of straightforward so far. And there's the Thunder. Okay, so I could have attacked there with Aegislash, but I figured might as well play it safe. Um, maybe I didn't need to play it safe, though. I mean, if I were, like, Scarf Pelipper... That might outspeed me, uh, but now I just get guaranteed weather control for the remainder of the game, which means Excadrill also doesn't have to worry about weather anymore. Uh, which means I'll be the fastest Pokemon even after Tailwind expires, which is good, good, good. So, alright, 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 alright. Well, I'm going to use this time to actually think back to the last game. I mean, you shouldn't normally do this, but I, I feel like I've already set up a game plan for the remainder of this game. So I'm trying to think back to the last one on what I could have done better. I mean, Salamence Swamper was a perfect lead against anything I could have brought, and really... Like, Bulu obviously gets wrecked by my opponent's Salamence, so I can't really leave that. Like, Aegislash is the one thing I'm thinking towards, but even the Z Shadow Ball probably doesn't knock out either Pokemon, which is the main issue. Uh, and there's the Baratic. So Baratic makes an appearance, which is pretty cool to see, although I'm not sure if it can really do too much when the Sand is up. So I'm not really worried about Manectric offensively, so I think I'm just going to click Rock Slide, and I'm just going to go for the Z-move here into Baratic, because it might want to protect, and I'd love to get free damage through the Protect. If it doesn't protect, I should just knock it out. I'm surprised that Manectric has not Mega Evolved, because I would think I would think that it's the Mega Evolution of my opponent's team, but yeah, um, oh, Baratic switches out. I don't really understand that play. I feel like if you're, I mean, you're trying to bait an attack out, I guess, and maybe stalling out, and it is Mega Manectric, all right. So that's what I thought. Uh, not Mega Evolving is curious just because you obviously lose out on stats and I don't really have any electric type attacks like you're trying to redirect. But maybe my opponent was trying to conserve Intimidate for this situation specifically. Now if it has Overheat, it'll be interesting. Because it should have Overheat or Snarl, one of the two. But I'm not sure. I, I really don't know who's faster here actually. Oh, I get the flinch. That's unfortunate because that locks up the game 100% for me. I think even with Overheat, I should be able to survive. Um... And it, like, I, even if I got Snarled or Overheated, I think Aegislash knocks out Bulu anyway, but now I just win the game pretty much guaranteed uh, because I've got the Excadrill in the back. Like, the main concern was, okay, I you crit the Overheat, or you knock my Aegislash out, and then I'm stuck Rock Sliding at minus one. And then I have Excadrill, which can knock out one Pokemon, but not two Pokemon at the same time. Although I guess I could double Rock Slide. I don't know. Yeah, that's definitely an unfortunate flinch, but I, I don't think I really needed it, and I think... Um, 
It was one of those positions where it's like, oh, if I get the flinch, that pretty much seals up the game for me. But even if I don't, like, things are perfectly fine. So I wasn't going for the flinch. But um, I do want to know, I, like, I wish I knew what my next trick was going for there, though. Because, like, I, in Pokemon, I think it's always important to be like, okay, could I have won that game even if I didn't get lucky? Um, and if the answer is no, then you should be reassessing your play. You know, like, how can I be in a position where I don't need to get lucky to win? But Baratic comes in, back in. Um, how many turns of sand are left okay yeah more than enough <laughs> i'm just gonna rock side king shield here um and then i'll just be able to knock out both pokemon at once or both pokemon with Aegislash slash and excadrill so definitely unfortunate um the did end up being faster once a mega vault which shouldn't be too surprising or just in general manectric outspeeding Aegislash slash even under tailwind shouldn't be too surprising which is why i did protect the turn earlier so it was a nice call my opponent sent to thunder the salamence but yeah i I think with Excadrill in the back, I should be set. Um, I really want to know what Manectric has, though, uh, and hopefully it reveals it here. So I'm hoping I don't flinch. But I didn't want to switch out here just because there's little reason to switch out. Um, you might as well try to get Excadrill in safely 100% of the time. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> Thunder from Manectric in the sand. Does connect with Tyranitar. Play rough. Whoa. It should knock me out. Yeah, it does. Dang, that's pretty cool to see, man. That is pretty cool. So, nice play on my opponent's end. Um, you know, capitalizing off me going for the obvious King Shield there with Aegislash, but I'm okay with that. Everything heals back a little bit, but I've still got Sand up for the remainder of the game, or, like, the next three turns, so my opponent can't really protect stall it. So, should just Iron Head and Shadow Ball. Yeah, I don't think my opponent... I'm not going to risk, like, missing Rock Slides. And with Iron Head Shadow Ball and Excadrill being the fastest Pokemon, even if Baratic protects and Manectric overheats the Excadrill, Shadow Ball knocks out Manectric and I'll win 1v1 Aegislash against Baratic. But no Protects come out, so that should seal up the game for me. Yep, Iron Head gets the knockout, and Shadow Ball here should knock out the... I was going to call it a Mandibuzz. The Manectric. It doesn't have Overheat either. Yeah, it has Flamethrower. So I don't feel as bad about the flinch, because with Overheat, like, maybe you have a chance to knock me out with a crit. Um, I guess Flamethrower... I don't even think a Flamethrower crit would knock Aegislash out, to be honest, but I'm not sure about that. In, in shield form, of course. Uh, but Shadow Ball here will come out, and we'll seal up the game. So, I don't know. This was one where I felt like the lead matchup worked out really nicely. Uh, and, and I feel like with this team specifically, the lead and like leads end up being so important so many of the time so for this one it was like the lead matchup ended up working really nicely my opponent just had you know pokemon that didn't have as good like base stats and wasn't able to really execute a strategy around those pokemon too well um and trick was kind of like it was obviously cool and it put on a lot of pressure but with the lack of like hidden power ice you weren't it wasn't able to knock out salaman so i was able to just get tailwind up once i got tailwind up and once i got the chip damage onto pelipper and like me not getting fully paralyzed that was the biggest thing because had i got him fully paralyzed maybe pelipper sets up tailwind and then maybe it's a different game but without me getting fully paralyzed i get the knockout onto pelipper age of slash was just phenomenal against my opponent's team as a whole and my opponent couldn't really do very much about it so we do split today's episode i uh, have had a fair amount of losses i think we've lost one game in three of the four episodes but uh yeah you know i kind of expect that earlier on in the season and i'm um, just trying to you know learn as much from the losses as possible so i feel like in today's one it was like my opponent just had uh, one pokemon that specifically matched up very well against my team but also me blundering i don't know like i don't feel too bad about the turn where i didn't switch the um, into salamence because i feel like i would ice beam with swamper there i wasn't even expecting protect and protect didn't really make too much sense there i uh, ended up working out for my opponent but i feel like there was okay, but the turn where I expect the Salamence to come in and I didn't Iron Head and I drill run instead, that was a pretty bad misplay. So that was probably the key mistake that I'd say I made in the first game. But my obviously it's a testament to, it's a combination of that plus my opponent making all the right plays and playing well. And that's always a major factor in your losses. You know, sometimes your opponent just plays better than you and that is something that you can learn from. So yeah, that's going to be it for this episode. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Thank you guys for watching and hopefully you guys have been enjoying the start of Road to Rank. I know I've been having a lot of fun. I'll be doing a couple more episodes with this team might making a couple of adjustments here and there and then i'll be switching to a brand new team probably in the next maybe a week or so so thank you guys for watching as always if you did enjoy leave a like and i'll catch you guys next time all right peace